the trap of zina and losing your virginity is that it feels good. But guess what? When you lose your virginity, you lose the opportunity to have fun for the first time. So you might be with your spouse who might be a virgin, but you're not. So you might not even be like, you might feel like you're more sexually qualified from this person. And that can cause a rift. Don't let the shaitan convince you for a second that if you've committed zina, it's over for you. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Man, oh man, oh man. Another crazy title. SQ, what you going to go on about this time? What are you going to say this time? What are you going to do this time, SQ? Or do you really, really mean it? Is that really happening to the Muslims? Are they really losing their virginities? The truth is yes. The truth is yes. And you know, the sad part is that a lot of us are not even, like the ones that we're losing our virginity, it's not even something special. It's not even like the love of your life. It's not even when you're married. It's not even under the remembrance of Allah where you're given a reward for being intimate with your wife. It's in a condition that earns the displeasure of Allah. That is the most problematic about losing your virginity at a younger age. And guess what happens? You have no guidance. You have no one else. And you know, you, you're, you're with a person. You're not even like probably, you're not even dating them. They're probably more like a booty call. You, you get what I mean? They're not, you're not even like dating them. You're not even like wifey material. You get me? But you're still just having sex with them because you think that's the thing to do. It feels good, so let me do it. But let me ask you, don't you feel guilty after? And if you do, it's a sign of Iman. It's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't killed your heart. Your heart is not dead. The flesh in your chest right now is still alive and is calling you to turn back to Allah. But the problem is that guilt is usually suppressed by us listening to music, thinking about something else, or maybe doing some type of drug or something like that, just so that we don't have to think about that guilt. You see, guilt is a strong emotion. Guilt shows you that you just violated a big axiom, a law, a rule that governs you in your daily life. Because you wronged that rule, you feel a certain way. Now, guilt is something that's not in only Muslims, it's in any human being possible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put that inside of us. You see, Iman and all this is inside of you already. Our job is to help you uncover it. But before we continue with this video, we are, what, 101 days away or so from Ramadan. The road to Ramadan continues, okay? We're going to talk about our third name of Allah Azza wa Jal for the Asma al Hasna uh, starting today. I hope you remember the last two. Put them in the comment section below uh, what the last two were for the real ones who are keeping up with me. Here's the third name, okay? The third name is Al Ghafur. And I wanted to pick this name specifically for the topic that I'm talking about is because we need Al Ghafur if we are amongst those who are committing zina, if we're amongst those who are losing our virginities, thinking it's cool to talk about these things or do these things, right? And I know you feel guilty, but listen to what the name of Al Ghafur is. You see, Al Ghafur doesn't just mean Allah is the most forgiving, Al Ghafur means He is the one who forgives the largest of sins. And you see, zina is an extremely large sin. So Al Ghafur is the only one who can forgive you. Don't let the shaitan convince you for a second that if you've committed zina, it's over for you. Well, let's suppose it is over for you. The only one who can forgive you is Allah. So why is the shaitan convincing you to not turn back to Allah? He's made you overthink the process of zina and repentance. He's made you overthink it. How do I repent? Well, don't overthink it. Put your head to the ground, cry to Allah. Those emotions, when you're driving back from committing zina and you feel like trash, call out to Allah, say, Allah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, Allah, I didn't, I don't know what took, what, what, what happened, what came over me. That's Al Ghafur. He forgives the largest sin, so don't despair in Allah's mercy. He will forgive you. Don't forget that. Last time I forgot to talk about this, but for us to unlock the Asma al Hasna, we not only have to understand the name, remember, memorize the name, but understand what it means, which we just did, but apply it as well. And one of the best ways to apply it is by forgiving people yourself. If people have wronged you in a big or large manner, learn to forgive them. Because if we want to unlock Allah's forgiveness on the Day of Judgment, we have to learn to unlock our own forgiveness in this dunya and forgive those uh, even when they've wronged us in, uh, in a larger way. And the reward for this, alhamdulillah, is a beautiful, beautiful reward. Let's continue into the video, okay? If you wrong yourself through zina, 
Al Ghafoor will forgive you about it. But just don't overthink. Don't wait. Don't think that you have to wait until Ramadan for forgiveness. Don't think that you have to wait for the Jum'ah for forgiveness. You can start seeking forgiveness right now. Hell, you're watching this video right now. You could pause it. Pause this right now. Make the intention that you're seeking forgiveness. You might be asking, but I'm not committing zina. What do I... But aren't you doing something that you should seek forgiveness for? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said, you know, Astaghfar, Astaghfar about 70 times in a day. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pure. He was the best of all the best of ever creation, ever walked this earth. Yet he was seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Surely us, us sinners, basic people are committing sins that we don't even know about or are happening right now, okay? You see... The trap of zina and losing your virginity is that it feels good. It feels good. It feels good to have sex. That's the trap. But sex isn't bad. It's not, it's not bad for you to have sex, but it has to be done under according to how Allah wants you to do it, which is with your spouse, which is with, your, with, with someone that's mahram uh, to you for, for, for your spouse specifically, not like any mahram, right? Obviously, your, your, your spouse, your... The person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allocated for you to have relations with. And guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for those. Because you, between you and your spouse, you guys are allowed to do whatever you guys want between each other, whatever is halal, which is pretty much everything with the exception of like a thing or two, right? And you guys can have fun, uh, fun amongst each other. But guess what? When you lose your virginity, you lose the opportunity to have fun for the first time. So you might be with your spouse who might be a virgin, but you're not. So you might not even be like, you might feel like you're more sexually qualified from this person. And that can cause a rift. Not to add, not to mention all the pornography that a person could be watching that could corrupt a person's idea as to what sex or what relations really are between a husband and a wife. You know, maybe this should be a separate topic or whatever. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that it's a trap. It, it feels good. That is the trap. It's fun. That is the trap. Okay. I'm going to leave you on this and inshallah we're going to continue on and we're going to be out of this piece and wait for the next video inshallah. Hope you guys are enjoying these videos by the way. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has promised us paradise to people who protect two pieces of flesh. You see the first piece of flesh is the tongue. Okay? The tongue is so easy to let loose and start backbiting against people, making jokes on the expenses of people and just doing like other types of things that uh, like you could do with your tongue. You could spread corruption. With your tongue or your thumbs, right? Your thumbs are your new tongue because now we type everything that we want to say. We type it all out, right? So your, your, your tongue or your thumbs could get you into a lot of trouble. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that there's a connection between paradise and this object. So protect this speech of yours and you're going to be promised paradise. But that's one fold. There's one more piece of flesh that you have to protect. And that flesh is between your thighs. It is your private parts. And the Messenger وسلم, has promised us paradise to those who protect not only their speech, their tongues, but their private parts as well. Why? It's easy to fall victim to just doing it. It's easy. It feels good. It feels good to joke about people, to laugh at people's expenses, to backbite, to listen to people back. It's fun. It's fun and easy to have sexual relations outside of wedlock. It's fun. It's protection. And guess what? Most of the time, your speech is what leads you into having sexual relations, isn't it? Because you're talking to them in a specific way that leads you to doing that. You're typing to them in a specific way that leads you to doing that. Those two things need to get protected. I wouldn't be your big brother if I wasn't advising you about this. So if these two things are protected, not only will your life change, not only will your, your iman be boosted, especially since Ramadan is right around the corner, not only will these things be happening, but you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to be feeling proud. But SQ, I got the booty call already. She, she's on speed dial, man. Or he's on speed dial. May Allah protect us. They're on speed dial. What should I do? Sometimes I just want to hit them up. Now look, I'm not, I'm not one to tell you about masturbation. I know a lot of you are like sending me this video that Dr. Zakir Naik said masturbating is halal. Like all of you got mad hype. All you young 13 year olds got like, oh, Dr. Zakir Naik said masturbation is halal. I don't know. I didn't watch that video, right? But I will tell you this. If you're on the verge of committing zina, like you're texting this person, I'll be there in 20 minutes. If I had to pick between you committing zina and you going to the bathroom and, you know, like rubbing one out, every single day go to the bathroom, right? 
because after you're done, because there is no emotional intimacy with the zina that you're uh, committing, as soon as you're done committing zina, you just want to leave the room, you feel guilty, you feel bad, you don't even want to be around that person. I can promise you, it's not like that when you're married to the person who you love, a person who's completing half your deen. It's not like that because you have something called emotional intimacy. You see, when you only have sexual intimacy, after you're done with the deed, you just want to leave out of there because that's called sexual intimacy. You have no emotional backing. That's why you want to leave. She wants to leave, whatever the, uh, whatever the case might be. So if you're about to go commit zina and you're just like, I, and this might get me in a lot of trouble. People are like, SQ, you're recommending this. What about fasting? What? We'll get to the fasting. Okay? I'm talking about in the moment. It's 10 at night. I'm not going to tell you to hold a psalm right now. You can't fast. 10 at night. 10 at night. Oh, get married, brother. Oh, you can't get married. Right? 10 at night. After you're done doing that, believe me, you're not going to want to go. Then you have to commit ghusl. Now you have to do a ghusl, right? Because you just did the deed. Okay, you do a ghusl. You reflect about what you've done. You come out of ghusl, you read two units of prayer. Seeking Allah's forgiveness, not just from like masturbating, but seeking Allah's forgiveness from even wanting, inclining your soul, going in the direction of zina and asking Allah for help to protect your heart. You see, this all came about from youth that I admire who openly told me about an issue that they were having. And I'm like, man, I helped them, but now I got to help a larger amount of people because if they're going through this, how many other people are going through this on the low? So my, my advice to you guys out there sincerely is that these types of like relationships are actually preventing you from being with the person that you're supposed to be with. And the solution is not, ooh, get married. Why? Just so that you can have sex? Is that it? Really? That's a, that's a big reason a lot of people get married. That's not what marriage is for. Marriage is to complete your deen. You understand? It's not for you to just like, you know, oh, you want to get married because you're really, really horny and you're like 19 years old or 20 years old. That's not what marriage is about. It's to complete your deen. But that means you need to take the time to work on one half of your deen yourself, complete it yourself. So that now you meet your life partner and they help you elevate your next step to the next level. But the solution is never zina. You have to quit it. You have to stop. But I want to leave you on a very good note, inshallah, then we're going to end this video, inshallah, bi-ithanillah. What made me so proud about the shabab who were like talking to me yesterday was how openly they were talking to me, you see? When they were openly talking to me, it shows that they were comfortable and they wanted help. And that reminded me of a person who came to the Messenger Wasallam, And he came to the Messenger Wasallam, and he basically openly just asked permission from the Messenger Wasallam to commit zina. Like, Ya Rasulullah Wasallam, give me permission to commit zina. Just like, give me permission, just say it's okay for you. Just, you know? The Messenger Wasallam didn't dismiss him. He didn't say, Aslaq for Allah, what are you doing? Fear Allah, go fast, go get married. He didn't say any of that sort of stuff. He hit him with some logic. He made him think a little bit more that it's not just zina. There's, 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 you are a stakeholder in the actions that you're committing. He said, would you want someone to do this to your sister? To your mother? And he mentioned the other females that are very important to our lives and our hearts. He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, no, I wouldn't. Then he said, other people don't want it done to their sisters as well. That immediately hit him on the moral high ground. But the Messenger of Allah didn't just leave him high or dry after that. The Messenger of Allah made a special dua for him that talked about or spoke about his, uh, his urges of sex and all and committing zina. And your homework is to write that du'a in the comment section below. I'm not going to tell you what that du'a is. Wallahi, after that du'a was made by the Messenger وسلم, for that man, he never had desires like that ever again. So if you're stuck in the cycle of zina, if you're stuck in the cycle of masturbating pornography, don't you think that this du'a that the Messenger وسلم, has taught us can help you as well? It can but it starts by you finding that du'a. Find that du'a. Find that hadith. Find that du'a and type it in the comment section below. I'm excited to see who's going to do this. It's probably not going to be many, but whoever does it, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Hope you guys like the new style of the video. I'm trying to keep them a little bit more shorter um, because you know me, I could just go on and on like I'm doing right now. The wind is looking beautiful. Why don't I end it on some ASMR? Right? Let's end it on some ASMR. And you know you could do some dhikr in the meantime. Okay? I love you, love you, love you all for the sake of Allah. Thank you so much for your love and support. This is the furthest back the tide has ever, ever been. So I'm just over here. This is the furthest I've ever walked. Oh, it's so smushy. 
It's so mushy. I don't want to, you know. So, let's listen to this, okay? You're going to see a pop-up for some dhikr. Do some dhikr while you enjoy this. And we're going to end the video. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.